Hey, what's up guys? My name is Atrano. Something a little bit different for you here today. So a couple days ago, I did a live stream over on twitch.tv slash the Cherno. I've been trying to stream more often, so uh, give that one a follow. Or a subscribe if you've got Amazon Prime. Now I know that of course, not everyone has the ability to just sit down and watch a live stream as it's happening. And even if you do go back and watch over the Twitch VOD, sometimes it can be difficult because they go on for hours. So what I thought I'd do is take out some of the more useful parts of my live streams, things that I think could be useful for other people and post them here on this channel. So this kind of clip, I mean, it feels weird to call it a clip because it's like 40 something minutes long, but this kind of section of the live stream from a couple days ago is about me diagnosing some performance issues that I was having inside Hazel. To be honest, it's a little bit like watching a bit of a movie trying to figure out what on earth was going on here. So I hope that you guys do enjoy this one. Let me know what you think of this kind of content and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. So what, what, I, wanna, what I wanna take a look at here is um, a bit of a performance issue and I'm not sure why it happens, but basically when we shoot and we hit, the first time we do this, right? So the current setup we have is that we fire a projectile. It's like a little gl uh, a glowing green cube. When it hits something, it destroys itself and spawns this kind of explosion of orange spheres. But the first time this happens, there's like a couple frames where it just drops, right? So there's a bit of a delay, it takes a long time. But then it's fine on subsequent attempts. So I'm in release mode here, by the way. But if I click to fire, A, you can see that pause there. It's probably like a hundred millisecond pause or something like that, maybe a bit less. Um, and these will stay around forever. But then now if I fire again, there's no pause, right? And I can keep firing. And obviously you can see it's not dropping frames and everything is like pretty fine, right? So, and they'll never, dis <laughs> they'll never disappear at the moment. But for some reason, the first time I do this, you can see that pause, right? And then subsequent times, it's totally fine, right? So why is this happening? Not sure. Um, let's, let's investigate, let's take a look at it. Now I know that at the moment what's happening is that when you initiate as, a, a, I, I already kind of know maybe what it is. I think it's the fact that it has to initialize the script for that sphere, but the sphere, no, hang on. The sphere doesn't have a script though. So what I did was um, this actual prefab, right? What is it? Explosive Particle 2. This doesn't actually have a script attached to it. So what it's got is it's got a mesh, a point light, a rigid body, and a box collider. A box collider? It's a sphere. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Let's, um, maybe we should add a sphere collider to it. Yeah. Do we actually, do we render? We render physics stuff, right? Yeah, so, okay, so that's what the collider looks like at the moment. Let me just hide those icons so the light's not in the way. This is what it looks like. Um, so maybe let's remove that and let's add a sphere collider. Okay, you can see it in green. Uh, we've got a sphere collider now and that looks better. So let's um, maybe go back to our prefabs and drag in this. We'll call it explosive particle three. Uh, explosive particle three. Oh, we've already got EP3. I wonder what the difference is, EP3. It's also a box collider, eh, whatever. Um, so explosive particle three is what we're up to. Yeah, this is unfortunate because our current prefab editing situation is non-existent. So we'll drag in P1, uh, where is it here? Let's drag in explosive particle three now. So it's, that's the prefab reference and we'll call this P3. Uh, and now I will delete literally everything else. So let's delete maybe P1. Uh, EP3, explosive particle two. P3 is a good one, right guys? Okay, this one, this one. I hope I haven't deleted anything good. P3, back into here. Control S and now, now it should be the same, but we should have a sphere collider, yeah. So we still see that pause. Oh, but I didn't lock the transform. Was that bad? Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't lock the uh, rotation. Whatever, I don't care. So yeah, so we've got that. Let's um, hide the physics colliders. Okay, so... No, we don't have any anti-aliasing of any kind at the moment. So yes, the jaggies are jagged. Um, we'll probably add in like FXAA or something. Um, I don't really care too much about it. Like at the moment, I'd rather spend my time elsewhere. So we're not, we're not gonna do anything temporal just yet in the future probably. 
And uh, MSAA and stuff is decent, but it 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 will it'll slow down stuff in the pipeline, obviously, because we'll have to multi-sample. Um, so FXAA is probably what I'll use, uh, just because it's really simple and it's quite quick. It's just one pass, and that's it. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so, so it's interesting because again, there is nothing, there's nothing going on from a script point of view. That's what I thought could be it. But I know that nothing like, like what, what is that pause, right? Because nothing should be, yeah, nothing should be there. Okay, so let's close. So this is how we're going to debug it, right? We're going to close this. Then we're going to uh, come over here and uh, I'm going to find some stuff that we can take a look at. So I have, um, uh, we're going to use the uh, profile that we use, which is called Optic. We're going to hook that up. If I can find, um, is it in GUI or is it in build? Build? No. Uh, GUI bin release. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's send that to the desktop because I like to keep that around. We can run it as administrator if we want. Uh, we're not running Hazel as administrator, but no big deal. I don't think I need that. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to hit play. And then I'm going to go into Optic. I'm going to hit a record. And then I'm going to fire. And then I'm going to go back and hit stop. Okay, so what we should be able to see in Optic is a massive frame, 268 milliseconds. And it was all inside C Sharp's on update function. So the projectile on update function took a lot of time, 261 milliseconds, right? So that's clearly the uh, the pause that happens here. Now, is it the actual C Sharp code? I probably doubt it. Um, I don't think it's that. I think that it's most likely something else that it's calling. So, uh, I mean, it's doing a few things. It's doing create entity here and it's doing create entity with ID. So this is the prefab instantiation stuff, but there's clearly a lot of stuff that it does that is not pro not instrumented. So I actually want to instrument it again. We don't really have to, if we were super cool and we are pretty cool, actually we are cool. So let's take a look at this. I could just, get the sampling side of optic to actually take a look at it. So if we go into, where am I? Um, if I go into, let's just, uh, I think it's devmaster working. Yeah, it is. Okay. So if I go into, um, bin release hazelnut. Yeah. So we'll run, uh, it's not going to work. Is it? Let's create a shortcut. Um, let's set the working directory to be hazelnut. Actually, it might, might, might set its own thing, but whatever, we'll run it as, as administrator. Um, and we should be able to get the sampling side of things to work. So let's clear all this data, hit play. Uh, did that even work? Connection failed. Play again. Yep. Stop, 40 megabytes. I think this is definitely a bit more data now. Uh, yes, there is more data. Let's find the long frame. Here it is, 273 milliseconds. We had some long frames here. I'm not sure why. Synchronization stuff maybe, but anyway, uh, this is it. No, we didn't get any more data. Okay, we'll have to instrument it unless. No, this is nothing. Where's the, um, what is it? The syscalls? No, the flame graph, the flame graph. Hmm. Well, there it is on update entity call method. Uh, whoa. GUID to string minimal. Unresolved and then some other stuff. So the, the flame graph is kind of helpful as well because it shows some stuff. But yeah, script oh, and then hazel call method. What's hazel call method? Interesting. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. 
Get asset. Instantiate with translation. 1.5%. Well, yeah, it shouldn't... This is all very, very fast. So, what is it that is being so annoying, huh? Okay, let's close that. Let's go back and let's actually see what that prefab function is doing, right? So, if we look at... Uh, projectile, which I think is it. So on update. So this is what happens, right? And obviously it happens on destroy. So what we do is we instantiate 10 different particles. This is what I was doing on, on the live stream two days ago. Um, uh, so something here, oh, could it be this add force function? Well, okay. So there's a few parts here. First of all, instantiate is a thing, right? This will actually create a new entity. Then we have add for and again the the thing that is almost like the thing that is kind of suspicious here right is that it's n not not that it's <laughs> suspicious i should say i guess where are where's my stuff man threads um is that it's actually the projectile function that's taking a quarter of a second right it's not like some other thing if it was in physics or if it was in somewhere else we would know it's directly like a it, it's a it's a synchronous call it's always hard to say asynchronous because it sounds like you're saying asynchronous, but no, it's a it's a synchronous call coming from this exact function, right? So it has to be something here. Now, again, I think that um, there's console output. Well, the console outputs, it's just this. I don't think that's the slow part, right? <laughs> um, we are trying to load an invalid physics material. Mm-hmm. So loading invalid entities might be not optimal. Um, also on physics update is failing. There are some things here that are, but that that I think is just happening all the time. That should be fine. Nothing should be that slow. Consoles are slow, but they're not that, they're not 266 milliseconds for 10 lines slow. Um, so it should, I don't think it's the console. I mean, we look, we can obviously compile that out. I, I, I guess we should just to simplify this, but I'm pretty sure that it's um, going to be like either instantiate or add force or destroy, but destroy. This is only happening for one entity, but we are initializing. We, we are creating 10 of these. But again, guys, don't forget that it's happening the first time. So again, it does make me think that it's trying to access a resource or like, uh, like it's trying to load an asset or something like that. Um, possibly, but let, let's take a look at this. So instantiate. So I want to add instrumentation to some more stuff. So if we go into scene CPP, we have this instantiate function. It's not instrumented at all. I don't know why. I guess I just had, didn't go get around to it. Actually, a lot of stuff here isn't instrumented. So we have this HZ profile function uh, define, right? Which will which we use for instrumentation. So actually, pretty much everything should be uh, instrumented, right? So we'll we'll leave profile func here. Copy component could be interesting. Maybe we should do that. We'll we'll profile this just because if there's a component who has a copy constructor that's taking a long time. Which, come to think of it, we did add quite a lot of data into script component, which wasn't there in the previous version of Hazel. So that's possible. That's possible that that's causing the, the, the issue. But create prefab entity, instantiate. I want this stuff profiled. Uh, you know, find entity by tag. Sure, all of this stuff really should be instrumented. Um, so, uh, like, let's add this stuff in. Uh, and obviously, like, you know, this is uh, only used if profiling is turned on. So, we don't, we don't necessarily need to run uh, Hazel. Yeah, there's so many new functions. Um, that have been added that, okay, that, that's probably good. So so let's try this, let's try this again. And yeah, we don't need to rely on sampling, I think for this, might even turn that off. I'll we'll leave it. Is it possible to step through the script? No, um, I can't, at the moment we haven't actually, uh, we can't connect the debugger. Maybe that's something Peter wants to take a look at. He, he does like looking at stuff. Um, Uh, <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I sent Peter a message. We'll see if he can uh, do that at some point. Um, all right, so why do you prefer macros instead of Verity const expression template functions? I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, I have I have both um, and I use both. So yeah, anyway, uh, so let's, I guess we'll do the same test again now that we have a bit more data and we'll see if, um, uh, what? Don't tell me was the printing. That doesn't make any sense though, because because we print every time though. So what's just the first time that we print? That's weird. Well, it looks fine now. So it was the printing. Are you for real? Let's add the printing back in. What? <laughs> it's the printing. Is it because it has to initialize the console? Is it because it's the first time we've printed? It has to be that. What on earth? Let's print, okay, let's leave the printing in, but then we'll add something random in the onCreate function. Like, literally random. Hello. Okay, let's see if this has a slowdown. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, no, no, but it does, guys. I don't know if you saw that, but it happens on instantiate now. See? That was a delay. And if you don't, if you can't really see it on the stream, uh, fret not because I'll record it for you in, in optic. That actually didn't, didn't seem that bad. <laughs> but there it is. I think it's this 40 millisecond one. No, maybe not. No, here it is. 133 milliseconds on runtime start, right? No, 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 sorry, that's not it either. That's the that's the actual when I hit play in the editor. Uh, this is probably it. Create prefab entity, and then this is the create function, right? No, but this is the actual creating entity part. Oh, because that probably runs the on create function. Because we did instantiate, right? But then this is projectile. On, oh, this is on update, so it can't be this. Hmm. How interesting. But anyway. That's weird. I think it is, yeah, I think it's just the fact that... Um... That it's the first time that it's been printed, or something. Uh, anyway, we shouldn't be using the console, though. Like, in all seriousness, we shouldn't be using this, right? Like, at the moment, what happens is we use c -sharp's console .write line, which we shouldn't be using because we should be using something that, first of all, can go into this log that we have here, right? Because this log, um, like, you know, no one's going to be... In the grand scheme of things, no one's going to be running running um, this side by side, right? This is just something we use like during development, the actual console. So uh, printing in this thing should be way faster and it should be, um, we can kind of already do it. And I'm pretty sure that like, let's go to log.h because because I know that app, app messages from C++ show up there, right? So a good example is if I click, we still have a an intersection being printed here. So it actually will print what the ray, when you do the ray picking, like what entities it intersects, right? So you can see that if I position it like here or whatever, and I'll intersect a bunch, then it'll intersect two things or like three things or whatever, right? Um, so those intersections, uh, they get printed from C++ code, which by the way, it's a good candidate to remove them. Um, Actually, let's remove them now, because otherwise I'll never remove them. So this happens here, and it's called intersection. Here it is, hz1. Because it's an hz1 and not a core one, it gets printed in the app client kind of side of things. And that's also why it appears in here. Because um, that's the way this console works. So that means, though, that if we go back to the log file slash class, uh, then we can see how that even happens. Um, so we can, you can see we have, so edit a console logging macros. 
But how does that get there, right? Because so Hazel log get editor console logger. So oh, okay, so that's just a console logger, and I guess um, so that's also a speed log logger, and then I guess this kind of gets connected to the app one at some point. Editor console syncs. Yeah, so app syncs, you can see they, they don't just go into the app file and also stand it out. It also gets put into editor console sync. What's that one thing here? Editor console sync. So that's a, oh, right, okay. Yeah, so Peter actually wrote all of this. Um, so it's the f first time I'm actually looking through this code. Uh, but okay, it seems pretty standard. Um, so editor console panel push message is what happens, but we need to format it and do all this stuff to it. So I think that um, at the end of the day, it's just hz console log. These, these functions just need to be able to be called from, from C sharp land. So, so the, the question is, how do we like? What do we want to do? How do we want to make? How do we want to write these? Right. So if we want to log something like uh, this force, what do we do? Um, should it be like? I guess it should be like log one. Whoa! Don't tell me Peter's already written this. Oh my goodness me! Peter needs a promotion. Damn, dude! I was gonna like spend the next hour on this. So we've had this all along in Hazel, and I haven't even known. So what if I just do this, for example, let's just do like, um, info. Holy smokes. I'm actually like shook. What? How have I not been aware of this? Holy guacamole. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, it also prints it here, but notice how I think it's faster. No, nah, well, there is a bit of a pause. And again, I think that's just the console to blame. But I'm sure what you could probably do um, is that at the moment, right, these loggers actually do show up in the, like it, it does, it, it targets both. But what I think should probably happen is um, the editor console shouldn't do this, right? And if you don't add this to it, then it won't do it. <laughs> so let's let's comment this out just for fun. Um, and now what's going to happen is anything that we write in C sharp isn't actually going to appear in this log. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think I want that because um, it is nice to have it. Maybe maybe to a file would be better actually to a file, right? I um, don't oh know. Uh, Okay, that, that should be okay. They've got the same pattern anyway. Um, let's do this instead of this code. Just so that we can do as many as they as, as exist. Hmm. Yeah, super interesting. Um, this whole like slow situation. I wonder why. Like, I mean, I, I, I mm, that wasn't particularly fast either. Okay, well, let's um. And does that happen? Yeah, that does. Well, there is a bit of a pause versus no pause. That's the thing that's interesting to me, right? There is no pause the second time. Why is that the case, right? All right, where are we? Big frames. That is the uh, runtime start. I keep including that accidentally. That's nothing. Oh, maybe that is something. Okay, so there still is but projectile what on update? So there's still there still is something inside on update that's taking all of this time, right? Is so this part we presume is the log, well, but we can kind of tell, right? Because it's it's we do one single instantiation here. It takes 0.1 millisecond, right? This is us instantiating a single entity. That's this line here. Then, right. And, and, and remember, like, obviously this isn't like we do more than one of these instantiate, but this is the first one. We're doing 10. We're creating 10 new entities. 
when there's a collision, right? So that's the first one. And then this is the remaining like nine. And they take varying times. This one takes almost 0.1. This one takes 0 0.01. Like they take, they're actually faster than that first one. But the point is between the first one and the second one, there's like 50 milliseconds, right? So that means that the only other code that is between the two is this. And yes, suspiciously, log.info is in fact there, right? But then now that's our function, so we can actually profile that if we want. But the other thing it could be, again, is this add force, which logically you, you might think maybe that is a bit, yeah. Yes, vector three is a structs. Um, but like, no, yes, it's definitely, it's definitely not like heap allocation or anything that's causing the issue here, I don't think. Um, we are generating random numbers. Again, not really, though, don't really think that's the problem. And we do have add force. I want to add, so add force, I want to, I want to basically pro, I want to instrument log info and all the log functions and also add force. I probably won't keep the instrumentation inside this because it's useless, but add force, I guess maybe, you know, that's worth instrumenting. So add force, I don't even know what that calls in C++ land. So let's take a look. So if we go to the script wrappers, we can take a look at the add force function, rigid body add force, that sounds like that's it. None of these, by the way, are instrumented, but that's okay because they're mostly just retrieving stuff. And then we have add force in the actor. So this stuff I do want to... Um, H, H said, uh, is it this? I think it is that. I think it's just not included. Yeah, it is that. So let's include the profiler. And like the thing is with the instrumentation, like you want to be kind of careful because you get to a point where there's just, if you're, if you're instrumenting functions that do get called a billion times per frame, then you're just going to have too much data. It's going to be slow. It's going to be hard to deal with, right? So this is definitely something that you want to be careful with. Um, so I'm not just adding it everywhere, but like add force, I feel like, you know, and I might remove it. If I see that it's like nanoseconds, then whatever, you know, but if it's something that actually takes time, I might keep it. Um, so let's restart this. Um, oh, you know, no, and log, log as well. So log, okay. So what happens with the log, right? So let's, let's take a look. Cause again, Peter wrote this. So I actually have no idea what happens with it. Um, but if we, if we open up the log dot cs file then log message native is what happens right so that means that if we go back to here we look at the script wrappers we look at log message native which <laughs> doesn't exist and how are you joking oh no sorry it's just called log message we don't use the word native in native <laughs> native code okay so this just does hz console log trace okay so what we can do is actually add um just into here will be enough to see if it is logging or not if we add our profiler, which I guess just hasn't even been added, um, let's go ahead and do hz profile func here, right? Um, and then uh, I don't trust that call mono string to UTF-8. Yeah. But like, again, like the thing that, the thing that, the thing that you have to remember with this particular performance thing that we're diagnosing is the fact that it only happens the first time. So if uh, the messages are unique every time, right? Because they can, they contain random values. They literally contain randomly generated numbers, these strings. So it's definitely like, um, you know, it, it could still be that. It could still be like some buffer that's pre-allocated and then reused or something like that, that so there's like a performance penalty the first time we call it. And again, this isn't a huge deal. Like I don't want to, I want to emphasize the fact that this happens during debugging and logging stuff to the console. Like this is very non like distribution build material. Um, but it's still something that I'm interested in uh, pursuing for like the next <laughs> five minutes probably. So let's, so we've got the log function. We've got the uh, physics add force function. Now let's take a look and see. Uh, what's up? So, uh, what am I doing again? This, this is what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, let's hit play first this time so that we don't get the noise. Play again. <laughs> Sometimes you have to hit it twice. We shot, we stop and oh, well, we didn't need to stop, but yeah, we'll stop that. I just get confused because there's like a bunch of stop buttons. Okay, this is probably it, right? It's not, nothing is here. 
Is it a C sharp like memory allocation cost or something? Cause look, it's it's not here. Instantiate is here. But then like what takes so long here? And there's the log message, 0 0.022 milliseconds, right? And again, I think we've we've fixed the first one, right? Um we fixed the first uh like as in we we used to have like this is not being this is not being uh logged to the actual console anymore, right? So this is just this is just being effectively added to a vector or a buffer of sorts, which eventually I am GUI will render in this kind of uh, like log over here. So so at the time of calling the log function, there should be nothing in terms of like, oh, it's printing to the console and flushing stuff and synchronizing or between threads or whatever. So it shouldn't be doing that anymore. So again, what? We're back to this issue of what is going on. I'm beginning to think this is, this is in fact in C sharp land and instantiate again is very fast. Right, so we we um we do the instantiate function, and it's happy with it. So we know that we've progressed past this line. So the next is just basically this, because like the logging happens later. I am beginning to think that it's something to do with ra the random class, and this is temporary. This is just what is random. This is yeah. This is a system random from C sharp. I don't know if that has like some kind of uh, like maybe it needs a seed or it does something here, but it shouldn't. The constructor should do that, right? And the constructor happens before any instantiation. Hmm. Isn't this strange? Okay, well, shouldn't it be allocation of random by instance in C sharp? Allocation of random. Well, this happens before this, right? And this instantiate function is what uh, this is. This is instantiate, right? So we're, we're not interested in this so much as this, <laughs> this empty space here before the next, well, before log message. And there's add force, by the way, 0 0.004 milliseconds. So between log message, so the only thing that we have left, guys, the only thing we have left is this. It's just these two lines. And again, like, so new vector three, like vector three is a struct. Um, we have a struct, we're creating a struct. No issues, should be no issues there whatsoever. Random next double is the only culprit I can think of unless our, our profiling data is strong. Does C sharp guarantee that new random is before instantiate? Um, that's a good question. This is in release mode, so it is in fact possible that maybe it has done some stuff. Here's another thing we could do, right? So we could move random to happen uh, on create. But again, on create, uh, and again, I know that this is like not perfect, this like design of how I'm using random numbers, but this is a little, a little simple script, guys. Like, you know, it's not, um, so we could try doing this, right? It will perhaps create a pause in the onCreate function. This could be static, it could be somewhere else, whatever. Um, but let's just see what we can do with this, right? Um, let's try and build that. So, so in this case, it definitely shouldn't happen at any point, right? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So my next, my next step is going to be to change the random number to a not random number and see if that's the case, but let's see. Okay. Yes. We still get the pause. Okay. We still have the pause. It's, it's a lot smaller than it used to be, but it's still there and I just can't handle it. So <laughs> what was that? Let's do that again. That was weird. <laughs> Maybe we still got it, but I want to do it again. Ah, oh, it's because I didn't um, hit escape last time. Play, shoot, stop, stop. Okay, so where are we? Where are we at? There it is, fifty-nine. Well, I mean, fifty-nine milliseconds is a lot better than two hundred or something. But yeah, so it's, it's still same situation. Um, by the way, the create function. Uh, do we know when the create function happens? No. Oh, what's this? 
Ooh. Okay, look, guys. So this is it. This instantiate function, that's what creates the projectile. So the projectile really only lasted for 15 frames, right? So when we shot, that was this, right? That's actually, that took a decent amount of time for some reason. Create prefab entity, that took like seven milliseconds. Why is that so slow? That whole update took 12, that's, that's significant. Maybe we should investigate that as well, because I'm pretty sure subse subsequent firings don't take that much time. Um, but anyway, uh, but yeah, again, 55 milliseconds for this one. Also get one random number and on create. Hmm. Could do that. Okay, let's try that. And then after that, and I'll probably have to like print it because it'll, it's in a release and might optimize it out. So let's just do that. Um, oh. I think that may have fixed it, yeah. So it is the random number generator. Because look, now when I fire, I think there's a bit of a pause, but there's not a pause when I um, when I collide anymore. So let's try that. Like, uh, by try that, I mean profile that. So let's hit play. We'll fire. Hit stop. <laughs> I always keep hitting stop there. Um, but yeah, let's, let's see that. Okay. So look at that. So we have a 62 millisecond delay now, but look, it's in the create prefab entity in the instantiate from FPS player. So FPS player is the player controller script that when you click, it spawns that cube. So it's the random number generator. Um, and it's specifically, I guess the first time you call next double, right? So the first time that you call next double, it freaks out. So now C sharp source code is on the internet, isn't it? Uh, so like .NET framework source code. I'm pretty sure it's up there, right? It's on GitHub. It's open source on GitHub. So let's see for fun, just to wrap this up nicely and neatly. Let's see if we can find this. So system. Uh, net system maybe. No, nah, I've ruined everything. Okay, let's just let's just search for it. <laughs> Can I just start typing? How do I search again? Random. Dot cs. Just googling the file. I found it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know what version this is from or whatever, but I'm assuming that next double has some kind of. Ah, oh, that's cool. It jumps to this. Sample, internal sample. Mm. I mean, it doesn't look like it does any kind of like special stuff on the first time you call it. Right? Next double. That's definitely what I was using, right? Yeah, random next double. I yeah again. I don't even know what version that's from. It's reference source. It seems like it should be fine though. Like it should be what we're using. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of all call sample at the end of the day, and then that calls internal sample, which is this function here, which. Seed array, just an array of 56. Yeah, so so this definitely like when you when you hit random, right? Um, it calls this with environment tick count, which I guess is some kind of internal clock. So it calls this other constructor with a seed that is just like the current time. And then this obviously does do some initialization in the constructor. That's what it seems to do, right? Again, not really seeing anything here that would take 50 milliseconds. Right, but it is uh, all the. Mm, I mean, like these for loops are like 55, and they're just some math, so like, they don't really see anything major. But, like, sample internal sample seems even. Internal sample does nothing, right? Like, look, look at what it's doing. It's doing nothing. It's doing some arithmetic, like not much arithmetic either. I'm very overexposed. <laughs> 
I <laughs> just checked <laughs> the camera. Um, but anyway, what? How interesting. Dotnet framework 4.8. Now, I'm not using 4.8, though. I think I'm using 4.7. Let's just check. Um, I think it's 4.7.2 from memory. 4.7.2. See how good am I? I know my own engine. 4.7.2. So... Uh, can I switch to that? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> what? What if they completely chose to rewrite it? Eh. Nah, I don't think they have that. But, like, if it's on GitHub, why... Why... Why is it... Why could I not find it here? Oh, this is years ago, actually. But look, 4.8 is here. Net framework 4.8. They only do they only keep the. They probably use like .NET Core and stuff now, right? But yeah, I'm I'm shocked that I couldn't find random.cs. Is it because? Oh my gosh, it's because I typed in... Okay, so in GitHub, if you type in random.cs, it can't find anything because it doesn't include file names in its search. It only searches through code. So it was always here. Here it is. Ooh, 4.6. Okay, so this is an older version, but again, it looks identical. I don't know why they would suddenly decide, oh yeah, let's rewrite the whole random class and make it slow, but like, weird. I don't know. Um, it, I, I don't know. Okay, people are linking helpful stuff, maybe. Avoiding multiple instantiations, .NET Framework initializing two random number generators in a tight loop, or in a... Yeah, that was never happening. Never, ever was that happening. There was no... What I was doing before, right, before I moved it up... Because, again, now I'm not doing anything. I'm creating it, and then I'm doing next double, and then that's... this, this These two lines of code, and specifically this code, is taking 50 milliseconds. Now, I am, I am also logging it, but that... I don't think it's the logging that's... Maybe, what if it's the logging? But we t we tested it without logging, right? And it was still slow. Was it? But again... No, no, no. Okay, yeah, sorry. It can't be the logging. Because we profiled it, and we did log info, and we know that the slowness was between instantiate and log info. So we know that it was this. So, yeah, so we did do that. Um, and, and again, remember guys, logging in this case anymore is not logging to the console. It's logging to, it's logging into a vector, essentially, that is then later being displayed in the UI. So it's not actually like console logging. Um, but yeah, what I was doing before though, was here, right? I was doing this, sorry, not entity. I was doing this, right? And so this means this is an on update if destroyed, right? So if we have a collision, we destroy it just that way because we can't, um, we can't like, uh, we can't instantiate new physics bodies inside a collision, inside a collision callback. So we um, uh, defer it to the next update and then we destroy this current entity as well. So this does not get another update after this. So this code, even though it's in on update, runs once, only once per green cube that we shoot, not per like orange ball that we, that is our, <laughs> that is our explosion. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on, man. A lot of stuff going on. Anyway, so that being said, If you, now you're only creating random instance, but not using it. So if it lags on shot, it means it's, no, no, no. So it's not like, um, this does not lag anymore. Now what's like, there is no lag. So what I did is I added this line here, right? To make sure that we actually generate at least one random number using this. And there is now a delay here. If I remove this so that the first time we call random next double is inside here, it's the, it's this code that lags that like takes 50 milliseconds the first time. So we know that it is, it seems to be random next double. Now, another thing we could do is like C-sharp has some timers, right? We could just C-sharp timer this, right? That, that would probably be very simple. 
Um, and that would probably be the best solution, I think, for the just to like make sure that's actually that. So like C sharp timer. Um, there's just a timer class. We can just do sell. Like, is this a good performance timer? I don't know if it's good for performance, but ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay, so let's do um, uh, timer timer. A system threading system threading timer. System threading. All oh, right. Okay. It's the same thing. So let's try this. I don't even know if this is like a good timer with an infinite period and an infinite due time using, uh, oh wait, this is probably not what I want. Uh, maybe I should go C sharp performance timer. It's been a while since I've uh, done that. Try not logging the next result of the next double. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it outside of the logging. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah, stopwatch. Sorry, that's it. In system diagnostics, yes. Stopwatch. Give me that. And let's get rid of threading. Well, actually, we don't need, like, anything here. Stopwatch. And does that start immediately? Uh, apparently, you can do start new. Uh, and then we can do sw.stop, sw.elapsed milliseconds, and we'll log that in our, uh, well, we'll log that actually into the console. How about that? Stopwatch. Okay, let's do that. Not the best, uh, but like again, and, and I've left the log in there for now, but that's just temporarily, right? Um, should we maybe make this a bit smaller? Ah, I'm exposed. All right. Um, so let's. Uh, I hate it when Windows does that. By the way, I need to turn that off. Um, so uh, let's. I don't know why I'm still printing this stuff. Um, let's hit play. Okay, that should have already done it. Oh no, no, sorry. It's when we when we shoot. <laughs> On exception. Beautiful guys, we did it. <laughs> why? Oh no, what? You're really going to give me an exception. <laughs> Be nice if we knew which exception, but of course I'm, uh, I only care if it's a null reference exception. Um, so we got this, right? Uh, if exception doesn't equal null, yeah, let's, let's maybe like, um, actually write what exception it is. That would be useful. Let's do that. We don't know what it is. Well, it's, it's exception. It's probably got this stuff, right? Oh, but okay. Um, uh, well, it has to be an exception, surely. <laughs> it has to be the base class, right? Look, I'm being all C sharpy here instead of using cast operators. Aren't you guys proud of me? All of EA's tools are pretty much written in C Sharp, by the way. So I do have quite a bit of C Sharp experience um, from like my EA days. Um, all right, so um, so let's uh, let's just hit play and see what the exception is. Could not load a sample. <laughs> what the? <laughs> 